Okay. Hello. Oh, these headphones sound like crap. You guys want to talk to the audience while I'm plugging in my headphones, getting ready to go? Hello. I was thinking audience. maybe we should uh, start this show at 10:30. <laughs> that's maybe a, that would that's solve a good time. all problems. I think if we started number. this show at 10:30, then the show wouldn't start till 10:45. Strange love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live and 2010. I'm Cami Chaos, your host of Strange Love Live, but not 2010. You can do your own thing for the year. Um, and as always, behind the desk, we've got the lovely Dr. Normal. And our guest this evening is Rick Tarosi. Hello. Hi, Rick. Hi. How are you? Good. Well, Good. Long time no see, I know, Rick. It's been a few days since I've seen you guys. No, it hasn't. Oh. <laughs> um. So normally, like the go-to thing I would say when you come on the show is, "This is Rick Tarosi, the Silicon Florist, or Rick Tarosi of the Silicon Florist." Mm-hmm. And I feel that in the past couple of years, have been unfair to you. How so? By only saying this is Rick of the silicon florist yeah and so in the tech community in portland Uh you are by far and wide predominantly known as the silicon florist you're not going to start saying nice things are you not this early in the show no okay good i'll save the nice things for later that's good when you're more emotionally (laughs) able to deal with them yes because i'm not emotionally able at this point yeah but i mean that's what i'm i mean i i'm really proud to be known for that yeah quite frankly yeah so you're not like, what? Pay attention to the other things that I do. Mm, no. no, 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 not at all. Mm-mm. 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 So what made you want to start the Silicon Forest? It was the 3 a.m. wake up kind of. Uh, yeah, back, of back then I used to go to bed and actually be able to wake up at 3 a.m., mm-hmm. which was interesting. But um, what made me want to start it back in 2007, August of 2007, was... Um, just that I saw a lot of cool stuff going on in Portland, and um, I had been on Twitter pretty actively for probably four or five months at that point in time and saw a lot of people talking about, you know, I'm doing this or I'm working on this kind of project, and I had started talking. I'm a, The other thing I do is I'm a consultant for startups and that kind of thing. So I talked to a lot of startups, and there were a lot of them who were, who were um, either – telling me about ideas or talking about, um, you know, products they were going to create. Mm-hmm. And they didn't seem to, there were, there were all kinds of people doing all kinds of really cool stuff, but none of them were talking to one another and none of them knew what the other companies were doing or what they were doing with the products. And so it was just one of those things where it was like, this seems like an obvious need to mm-hmm. start covering, um, covering the the space and what's going on in Portland and what the what the startups were doing and uh, it really shocked me how quickly it just kind of took off and suddenly had a life of its own and then I was actually um, feeling obligated to publish and and continue to to pay attention to what was going on and those kind of things which mm-hmm. was great and um, and I've been you know uh, more than more than happy to continue doing that. Um, I really enjoy it, and I'm really a big fan of all the stuff that's that's going on in Portland. So over the last two and a half years, yeah, ish, little little less than two and a half years, yeah. almost two and a half years. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah, yeah. And my math skills, you know. Sure. Um, what are some of your favorite moments? <clears throat> I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this. Yeah, I know. That's a tough one. There are so many, um, you know, throughout the whole time I've worked on it, I think the thing that continues to impress me and the thing I always kind of marvel at is the deep sense of community in Portland Mm -hmm. and, um, and how supportive and collegial the community is. And, um, 
you know, some of my favorite moments are always when, well, like it happened, it happened a couple of times this year. Honestly, some of my favorite moments are when like Mike Rogaway at the Oregonian beats me to a story or somebody at the business journal writes up a startup before I do, because that means that the people are making progress and mm-hmm. that, that the traditional media are actually starting to pay attention to them. Um, you know, the square covers something that I haven't had a chance to cover or maybe even haven't heard about yet, Mm -hmm. which sounds kind of weird, but it's the things that where other people beat me to the story. Marshall at read, write web covers something that got to work Marshall in at some point, but (laughs) you always do. I do. I like to wedge his name in whenever (laughs) I can, but the, um, you know, it's those kind of things, which, uh, which seems kind of counterintuitive, but it's those times when someone else recognizes the potential of Portland or recognizes what someone else in Portland is doing, Mm -hmm. um, where I hear about this story from another, um, you know, journalist or, or somebody in the media. Those are my favorite times easily, um, because it means we're making progress and it means that, that, stuff is happening. I mean, I, I've said since day one, starting that when I started the blog, that my primary objective is to make my blog obsolete. My blog shouldn't be there. It, this is stuff people should be covering that, yeah. that are paid to do this kind of thing. And all I'm trying to do is raise visibility for people and, and maybe make some connections for folks in the media, um, so that they can better understand what's occurring mm-hmm. in Portland and start, start actively covering it because, um, there's there's just a lot of cool stuff going on that people should be paying attention to. Okay. Even though today is the first day of 2010, mm-hmm. you're actually here to do the same thing you did for us last year. Right, but I'm actually here. You're actually here. There's no Thonami to prevent you <laughs> not a, from being yeah, in not our, a photo in of our me staring randomly off into the distance. Yeah. That photo didn't like me very much. <laughs> it didn't. Well. It wouldn't look at me. It's a little sad. So, but you're here. I'm here. To do the same thing you did last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Via Skype. Yeah. Which is kind of give us a rundown on what happened in 2009. Mm Mm-hmm. So you, want, so you want me to kind of do that just in general? Well, I think <laughs> I was looking, you know, I was looking at all the stories well, and I... Well, you could tell what, what precedent you use to choose these items and then go. Right. So last year, well, mm-hmm. you know, I listened to the show last year and... Um, and we kind of went through a, you know, top 10 stories kind mm-hmm. of thing. And I really tried to do that. But what I found happening was, um, okay, 2008, there was a lot of cool stuff going on. But the primary theme that came out was this development of this community. Mm-hmm. Everybody was riding, everything was riding high. Yeah. Everybody was trying new things. It was really experimental and um and we found this community forming, you know, around Legion of Tech or around Bar Camp or around uh, Beer and Blog and um, or around the show or around, you know, um, Silicon Florist or whatever. There were, the, there were these communities forming mm-hmm. and then around CubeSpace. And they were they, the, 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 the consistent theme throughout everything was this kind of community involvement. It was a um, bonding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of feeling our way through it. And so I, I started to look at 2009, and there were actually some, um, there were some varying themes in there. But back when um, I can remember, I was at uh, Portland Web Innovators, which is a monthly gathering Adam Devander runs. He had asked me to do a 2008 recap. And and w- the thing that came out when I tried to do that recap was this sense of community. And I can specifically remember saying that it's really important that we form the community now mm-hmm. when things are good because there are going to be times when things are bad and we're going to need the community to be able to kind of support itself or mm-hmm. self-sustain. You know, it's great to have community in good times, but it's really the bad times when we need yeah. it. And and unfortunately, that was a little more foreshadowing than I care to admit it was. But, um, you know, what I saw looking for just kind of an overall um, major theme for 2009, it was really our, I mean, it was really... Uh, our formative years. It was like our teenage years for the Portland community. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There were some really, really good highs, but there were some really, really bad lows. And there was a lot of ebb and flow to the mm-hmm. year. And so um, I think it was, I think it, 
um, forced us to be a little more mature about what we're doing and what's going on in there. So, for example, um, you know, the big, biggest negative story of the year easily is, you know, cube space going away. That is the thing that that was heartbreaking. That most deeply affected our community and really codified some some you know through its demise really helped the community kind of reform again. Mm-hmm. But but it was still one of those things that like you say it was heartbreaking. I mean it was really that was I kind of referred to it as you know that was the campfire that was the thing that we kind of huddled around and that mm-hmm. that helped help the community form um, over over 2008 and that kind of thing. Um, but then there were these amazing, you know, highs, people getting funding, people starting, you know, new companies that were wildly successful mm-hmm. right out of the gates. There were um, huge events like Open Source Bridge that were, you know, just volunteer driven that mm-hmm. kind of came out of nothing to to fill gaps that were, that were, um, that were exposed in the community and and so it was really it was really interesting looking back across to see how much um you know manic depressive like <laughs> angle we had going throughout the year it was kind of crazy but uh, but there's a really you know so there's no one um there's no one consistent theme but i think it's just you know uh, it sounds like it was there 2009 was a roller coaster it i was. mean that's a pretty yeah 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 yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. It was there. There was just a lot of stuff, and it w- and it would oscillate. It would mm-hmm. like, we'd have something terrible happen, and then something great would happen, mm-hmm. and you know, it would just kind of go back and forth. So, that's my general, general theme for the for the year, I guess. Do you have some like pinpoint areas you want to talk about? Um, well, I think uh, we can. T- I was sh- I was not shocked, but I was I was I continued to be. Um, surprised at how quickly mobile took hold in the portland area especially mm-hmm. iphone related mobile um you know one of the one of the companies with whom i've been most impressed is small society uh, with raven and james and and all those guys and they've just done a phenomenal job and are are lining up you know household name clients on a regular basis yeah. they're they're ridiculously busy and they're building very very beautiful iphone apps mm-hmm. um you know, similar uh, similar story as the Urban Airship folks, which just kind of, you know, came out of the, again, sad story, demise of Vadoop. Yeah. The good story, Urban, Urban Airship, Airship came out of that. So, I mean, we, if Vadoop had continued to stay strong, who knows if Urban Airship ever would have come about. So, um, and if you don't know what Urban Airship does, they handle... Um, push notifications and in-app purchase for for iPhone applications and they basically uh they their other application developers use their stuff as a back end to to service that stuff and they're doing phenomenally well mm-hmm. um and and I'm just I'm really impressed with those you know those kind of shining stars that have rapidly emerged in the iPhone I remember last year when we talked we talked about like field runners as yeah. as a as a big um, or was that last year or that was over the summer? Might have been. Yeah, because Field Runners came out this year, didn't it? Did last I can't year, two thousand nine. Like it seems like I can't remember because I talked about it on the Square at some point, and I think I'm, that was like in November or something. No, yeah. I'm fairly certain. <laughs> I could go back and watch the footage, Mr. Trapezi. <laughs> I'm just saying, I but can't I'm remember. fairly certain it was over the summer. Okay, when you came on for your. Uh, Silicon Florist birthday. Yeah, we might have talked Maybe. about it then. I could and, be wrong. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I don't we, care. It's fine with me. We really moved from a uh, pure pure application play to this distributed iPhone mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So, um, you know, we had like touch pets came out huge um, mm-hmm. this year. Uh, we had some other. You know some of the some of the small society apps with the Zipcar app and the My Starbucks app and those mm-hmm. kind of things. So we're still doing app stuff, but we're also seeing uh, you know this kind of continued development on the infrastructure side and this this understanding of how um, mobile works and and potentially could work. And I think one of the reasons we have that uh, potential is you talk to anybody in San Francisco and they can't get the kind of connectivity we get. Here in Portland, I mean, everybody may have iPhones there, but Edge never works. So it's Edge it always works for me, and Edge works here <laughs> quite well. And we're both on the old, old, old yes, iPhones. Yes, but um, 
but so it's just that is the most that's the most interesting thing that's really kind of come up this year that and a close second to that is i think people actually starting to get funding to Mm -hmm. do what they're doing i mean the biggest the biggest uh funding last year was easily jive which pulled in another i think another 25 million if i remember correctly but they're also you know second porch Mm -hmm. announcer again jan rain had three million um you know about us started off the year with three million so there were there were uh you know that kind of that old you know, complaint about, well, if you're in Portland, you can't get funded kind of started to change a little bit. And you saw, you saw places like, um, uh, you know, DFJ frontier, uh, which is a, a venture capital firm opened up an office in Portland mm-hmm. and you saw more interest from the, you know, the, the Oregon entrepreneur network and those kind of folks in the social stuff. I mean, I think the, I think second porch is just a great, a great story for, the web startup community because they are a Facebook app and yeah. they were, they were selected by one of the traditional entrepreneurial um, organizations to receive funding, the mm-hmm. Oregon angel fund. And that is one of the first times we've actually seen somebody that's a pure social media kind of play get funding. So I think that's a really good sign going into 2010 about what could potentially happen um, for people who are continuing to work on stuff. I think the other kind of uh, consistent theme throughout things is that we started to move away from from pure tinkering and actually started to build some businesses. I think when we talked in 2008, we we talked a lot about how, you know, Portland is very much an R&D shop Mm -hmm. or it's very much a place where people like to express themselves creatively with technology and 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 experiment with things and try and make things happen, but that there's not always a business case for doing those kind of things. And I think this year we saw some really impressive startups that were very sound business pursuits as well as very interesting technological things. So So I keep hearing the whole, like, 2009 was horrible, 2009 was horrible, but it Mm. really doesn't sound so horrible. No, I don't think it was. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, you know, employment is down, people are having problems, but there's always problems. It was hard, it was hard. it was adverse, mm-hmm. I think, and, and you know, not to go back to my coaching, but it's like adversity always kind of causes people to do, yeah, to think creatively and do things a little differently. And you know, again, to go back, I think the Vadoop example is a great one. You mm-hmm. know, there were a bunch of people who who got laid off and had no jobs when Vadoop cratered, but I'm yeah. seeing at least three or four startups that are coming out of that that yeah. will be phenomenal. And and um. You know, you got to you got to kind of just roll with the punches in that in that regard. What's your favorite thing you did this year? What do you think? I, I think you I think you could I think you could answer that question. I get to ask the questions. You could say it. I think thirty hour day is the most phenomenal thing I've probably ever done professionally. I mean, that was I that, you know Open Source Bridge is a close second. Like mm-hmm. I was really proud to be involved in that, but um, you know, I was just kind of a supporting. Uh, role in that. that that was Audrey and Selena, you yeah. know, driving that, and Reed, and they did an amazing and job. Reed Beals, they did I mean, an amazing and job. Eagle. I mean, they were all involved in that, but they were really the driving force, and I was more kind of supporting function, mm-hmm. and and I was really proud of what we were able to accomplish with Open Source Bridge. But thirty hour day, I mean, like everything else, pales in comparison to that. That was just a, it, yeah, okay, that was just a big deal. Are we done recapping things? I think so. I mean, there's, yeah, I think, uh, you know, there, I think we, we did a good job of continuing to do what we do, like Mm -hmm. in terms of like, I think, well, there's another one, like WordCamp was phenomenal this year. WordCamp was phenomenal. The fact that we, uh, not only we, I say we. The fact that Word camp. the fact that Hockley well, it's the, and the Word I mean, camp that's folks. The, you know what we talked about the 2008 community. It, when you get that much community, everybody starts to take ownership of things, right. and it's we we we. Right, totally. It's true. So Hockley uh, and the folks at Word Hockley camp. and crew. Uh, the fact that Matt Mullenweg showed up 
um, you know, was a huge coup. The uh, especially since he, you know, there was there was word that he might not be able to make it given when we'd scheduled mm-hmm. the whole thing. Um, yeah, everyone was very pleased. Yeah, that kind of thing. You got a great interview with him. He now knows how to make martinis, which is awesome. I like to share my knowledge. That's good. You're teaching people to fish. I like that. <laughs> the, um, but that was and the fact like Excobar. I mean, the fact that there are people in Hello, like there are people in in Sao Paulo watching the stream because you know Joe from Blaze Streaming Media is there streaming it, and you know that was just that was kind of one of those events where it was like, and I guess that's another I, that's another um, that's another theme is when you look at things like Urban Airship, Small Society, Word Camp, Open Source Bridge, um, uh, Thirty Hour Day. It's Stop talking about it and you just still get emotional just when you talk about there. Do like something. I, I know, you. I do. Yeah. It's hard. But the it's like people just seriously started doing stuff. Yeah. I mean, we Portland is Portland gets ripped to shreds all the time for being very good at the talk and not so much at the walk. And I think there was a lot of walking. There was a lot year. of walking going on in two thousand nine. And and a lot of people who um, spent, you know, countless hours trying to make stuff happen and they did it phenomenally well. And they should all be very, very proud of what they accomplished. And and I was, you know, I was very happy to be involved in most of those events as much as I could, but I was also very, very happy to be able to kind of cover those and and tell other people what these folks were actually capable of doing because it was, there were some some very nice high points in the year for as like you said for as you know down as the year was supposed to be. Um, there there were some good there were some good things that happened. I liked my year. I did too. I like 2009. 2010 is going to be better. It is. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be way better. But. So let's let's con- confer with Doc Normal here for mm-hmm. a moment. Hi. You don't have to. It's okay. It's all cool. We just got to ask you a question. How should we best proceed with our predictions? Uh, we have such a terrible plan. I'm just switching <laughs> and switching and switching like I do. So I'm just asking, should we go ahead and start with our reading? Of the predictions, or would you like to play a few audio files for us? I'd love to play a few audio files, or one audio file, and then you can read a prediction. Okay. That would be great. That sounds okay. fantastic. So what we're going to do, everyone, is we've asked for predictions from the peanut gallery, which mm-hmm. is all of you. And we have uh, a few voicemails that were left, and a few emails that were left, and then we have a Twitter stream full of, of little mini predictions yep. that we're going to share with you guys. And then I believe I believe that there will then be in studio predictions as well. Okay. So you want me to? Do you have your headphones yeah, on? Yeah, we do. Oh, we can put our headphones on. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell us whose uh, whose file will, how, whose uh, prediction we'll be listening to, Doctor Norman? Um. Yeah, I will in a second here. This will be. Uh, I think we agreed. This will be uh, Aaron Hockley. Okay. Oh, Correct? fantastic. I believe he was our first prediction. He was so the first one we received. Let's take a listen and see how this will all work. <laughs> oh, man. Look, we can have I'm, our I'm still, drinking I still stuff. haven't recovered from 30-hour day. Just, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. There are other things happening, too. You won't ever recover day. from 30-hour day, my friend. No, Court, Court and Fatboy are still looking for the their missing podcast. <sighs> all right. <laughs> you ready? Here uh, goes. Hi, this is Aaron Hockley with my predictions for 2010. On a personal note, 2010 is going to be the year when I turn Hockley Photography and Social Photo Talk into full-time ventures. That's kind of my goal is that by the end of the year I'll be doing that full-time. I've got some interesting things lined up, including something new from Hockley Photography I'll be announcing on January 5th. Um, as part of the greater Portland tech community, I think 2010 will be the year when a lot of the community events have kind of uh, outgrown their grassroots community starts. Um, things like word camps and bar camps that I think have grown to the point where they can't really be easily organized by a couple people. And I think it's interesting to see how the community responds to that, um, whether the events uh, split off and become more niche events focused on a certain area or whether they kind of go big and go to the next level and start seeing, you know, much bigger sponsorship support and uh, bigger venues and things like that. I think it will be an interesting year. Um, 
I'm looking forward to it, and I really am looking forward to seeing how uh, the Portland tech community continues to uh, grow and its greatness. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> I like that, especially the part about Aaron uh, going full time. Yeah, that will be cool. That will be very cool. All right. So do we have any comments about his predictions? Well, I think, uh, you know, he makes a very interesting point that we can, uh, and it, it kind of goes back to the point I was making about the, we've kind of stopped tinkering with things mm -hmm. and, and started to really form some, some businesses around stuff. And what I know what Aaron has seen with WordCamp especially is that, you know, as it grows and continues to become more popular, you really need... Um, more resources to deal with that whole effort. And and I think, you know, I think Bar Camp is kind of in a similar place where in, that's a very popular event here in town. And it um, really is. Yeah, uh, Ignite, you know, those kind of things. I think we, um, well, and, you know, Ignite and Bar Camp to some, to some extent have really formalized that structure with Legion of Tech kind of stuff. But I think we're going we're going to find more and more people becoming uh, more interested in how they make these things self sustaining and less on you know how do we do this on a one off mm -hmm. kind of way and and what I hope is that we continue to get a good mix of both like I don't recall us having as many kind of random uh, new camps springing up in two thousand nine as we did in two thousand eight. The, about the only one that I can think of off the top of my head was Digital Journalism Camp. Yeah. Um, but we didn't have, we had repeats of previous camps. So we had Bar Camp back. We had yeah. Where Camp PDX back. We had, um, you know, these other... Word uh, Camp. Oh, Word Camp. We'd have, we'd have a repeat of a previous camp and not as much e experimentation on what kind of camps we could have. Really, uh, what's the big difference between a camp and a full-scale conference? I, I think the unconference format... And like finding its way in there. Yeah, but a lot of these camps have like formatted speakers now. True. Like WordCamp has True. speakers. Yeah, and WordCamp's kind of become like it, you know, it's become a hybrid. Yeah. And and doesn't doesn't necessarily follow just kind of a a bar camp format. That's because what I like about it is that it's got some structure. I do too, and I can remember us talking about that uh, previously. That um, one of the <laughs> things, one of the things I like, myself. but that's okay. You don't want to go back and watch past episodes. I no. mean, the the um, boring. Who does that? <laughs> the thing that um, that makes WordCamp and those kind of things interesting is with the hybrid format is that there are some times that I really just want to listen and learn, and there are other times I want to participate. And and giving people the opportunity to do both in the same venue, I think, is really good. If I have to go to if I have to go to conference and just sit there and listen the whole time, mm -hmm. that's not going to be as interesting to me. And if I have to go to a conference and form every single you know, session I'm going to be at that gets a little taxing as yes, well. Yes, it does. So, okay, yeah. All right. So I I wanted to uh, interject here that um, one of the things he talked about is maturing his startup, mm -hmm. his uh, yeah. yep. photography business, yep. and taking that to the next level. And I think that um, for me in 2009, a lot of these experiments and and you know. It's like cooking, like throwing in the ingredients and creating the recipe. And now folks in 2010 are looking for, you know, where's the payoff? Where's the, mm -hmm. the startup money? I mean, it's time to get serious. I've, you know, a lot of people have poured their hearts and souls into their projects. And and now it's, it's time to get busy. Yeah. And I think yeah. we're going to see more more of a focus on that um this year than ever uh i i, I told joe christensen at blaze streaming mm -hmm. media who is also a startup mm -hmm. and uh working on event streaming i said 2009 is your educate mm -hmm. you know the the educate your customers educate your potential clients and you know, and proof of concept, um, those that will hang in there through 2009 will uh, will have benefit in 2010. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. I still think trying to match money with with these concepts and these startups is 
is problematic even in 2010. But mm-hmm. I think, well, or, and I think you know, you know we, we've had this conversation any number of times where we talk about um, if you look at the people in the industry who are doing exceptionally well right now, it's because they did a good job of weathering the dot com downturn so yeah. you look at you look at the old tech tv folks you know like chris perillo or kevin rose or leo laporte or those kind of folks who just kept hammering away waiting for the next you know kind of upswell to come along or robert scoble i mean people like that who are working through the downtime and preparing for when things are going to be good again that's what i see happening in portland the other thing i think is interesting um is that this 2009 was one of really one of those years uh, and having, <laughs> I was fortunate enough to go through the whole dot com mm-hmm. thing, and so I kind of had this beat into me the first time around. But it, what happened this time around was people saw that having a full time job at a large organization is just as tenuous as working for a startup. There's no, there's no difference between the two, and there's no less stress. You know, and and if you're more emotionally engaged. So I think it's I think what it's done is really help some people make those hard decisions to say, this is what I want to do and this is what I need to do. And how can I make that happen sooner? You know, I need to interrupt you. We we actually are not going to have time to have like a a 20 minute conversation for each prediction. (laughs) So briefly, briefly surmise, briefly, briefly. Um, Because Rick touched on a point there. And, you know, it kind of ties it into 2009. Um, Having worked at a, and working at a large organization Mm -hmm. and and coming very, very close to losing my job in a layoff run uh, a few years ago, Mm -hmm. uh, kicked me into high gear to continue this venture. And I think that's partly what I was pushing for in 2009 for folks that, you know, and you see, you see, Court and Fat Boy, people like that, moving off into the yeah. podcasting realm. You know, you, you, there's no guarantee you're going to have a job. You got to push on and move forward. Right. And and um, and I think we all see that that there's uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Well, I think Court and Fat Boy are a great example. I mean, what a great addition to the kind of Portland podcasting yeah. scene. And we would not have as much good stuff from them. I mean, they were still doing the podcast while they were working. But it was time. edited. It was just like, it was right. like, oh, there's no music playing. Right. And like, we, that's another one of the situations Their where... Their podcast now is much better. Exactly. Yeah. Where it's something terrible happened to them, but they worked through it. And now the product they have is far better than it was before. And But now and, we still have to, I mean, they're in the same situation that we all are. They have to deal with the funding issue. Right. Right. So I'm going to say we're done now. Okay, with that. fine. And you Thank guys, you, Mr. no Hawkley. more 20 minute, no more 20 minute, <sighs> no more 20 minute you and <sighs> you, you and you, <sighs> no more long, we like long. To check. I am going to read, I have three predictions. Okay. I'm going to read them all three. Can I just tell the affiliates that we're going to go over <laughs> tonight? Over. No, no, no. <laughs> we we're, may be running uh, a little long. We'll we're be gonna, running long tonight, uh, affiliates. So let me, let me, let me tell you okay. now. We're going to run the show for one hour, and then I am going to end the show, but we will continue to stream live. It just will not be part of the podcast. Okay? So it will not Cammie be part of gets naked. It will. I'm getting naked tonight. <laughs> I don't know. No one told me this. Bumps the viewership. I wear good underwear, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> oh, okay, that's all right, good. So, thank God I'm for not, that. <laughs> not so okay with that. But that's fine. All right, so I'm going to read three predictions. Uh, one, the first is from Dane Hesedal. It's very light, light-hearted. Similar will destroy all other forms of communication, <laughs> replacing phones, email, and in-person conversation. Hmm. Will replace all existing governments and usher in a new era of happiness yeah, and I like pieces. That. Also, kittens. Kittens and monkeys. He n- nothing about monkeys, nothing about which is un- monkeys? uncommon That's strange. for Look, him. My, yeah. my tiki is a monkey. His so. name is Manchego. I'm a Manchego. Um, the next is from John Nastos. Mm-hmm. Hi, John. The I have to use air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> the media, as we know it, will continue its paradigm shift. Podcasting and video casting from small outfits will become increasingly popular. I'm thinking Moore's Law or even faster. People that were smart enough to get in at the beginning, like Leo Laporte in Revision 3 on the international scale, and Strange Love Live and, <laughs> and, and uh, PDXFM on the local scale will become the new media kingpins. In other words, look forward to becoming the man. Nice. Good. The man. Yeah. 
Uh, do you have Van Sanders I here? I was going like to ask if you have Van Sanders. I'd love to read this Can one. Can you get Van Sanders for us? I've okay. got it right here. All right, cool. so you read Van Sanders. Okay. Uh, uh, so John Nastas was talking about uh, the uh, the man, as it were. And uh, let me go ahead and put this up on the uh, screen. A little wonky uh, start to 2010, obviously. Um so I thought that this one was very interesting. This is from uh, 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 the Van Sunders, <laughs> yeah. uh, who, who do podcasting uh, down in um, uh, California, Monterey, I think. Hmm. Uh, I probably have got, got that wrong. And uh, Tally does a, a, a um, health podcast, mm -hmm. and, um, and then there's the money podcast. So I thought this was interesting, and we'll go with this. Um, he says... Video, more and more content will head towards live streaming and on demand over the internet. That means that profits will get more and more difficult to maintain for cable and satellite companies. It also means that physical discs such as DVDs and Blu rays will lose sales to streaming services like Netflix, Watch Instantly, Hulu, and other online radio s video services. While the transition happens more and more dedicated boxes like roku popcorn hour and maybe even whatever product apple replaces current model of the apple tv with in the coming year i botched that sentence <laughs> um but i think this is more uh so online video and less on dvd mm -hmm. um at the same time Podcasting, and I thought this was interesting because this somewhat contradicts what john nasto said podcasting will not be a major force in 2010. It will continue to grow, but probably at the same rate or maybe slower than the internet as a whole. Video will become a larger percentage of the podcast as people move to differentiate themselves. Unfortunately, it will continue to be difficult to monetize video podcasts due to the smaller audiences, so very few video podcasts will be self-sufficient. More often than not, video podcasts will be a means to market oneself or one's company, and the trend will continue where the mainstream media will increasingly move in and dominate the space all in all podcasting will be a difficult place to profit as an independent especially for newcomers mm. your thoughts uh oh that's interesting i mean i think uh you know and this comes from a podcast from a, from a, from from a, a podcaster, podcaster yeah. right and he has far more you know experience and and all that jazz with that but where i see podcasting currently is very much where um, and I think we've talked about this before, but it's very much where I saw blogs like pre tech crunch, pre read, write web kind of stuff. Like up until that point and blogs were very much, here's what my cat's doing. And, and, you know, here's what I had for lunch <laughs> kind of things. But the, uh, and, and podcast, you know, uh, by, chaos.com by, by and large, hey, I don't really talk about my cats very often or my lunch, just to be fair. Okay. By <laughs> Asshole. By and large, you know, many podcasts <laughs> today are like we've talked about. Somebody sitting there with a with a pair of headphones, looking into a you know like the a, ones you're wearing. A, no, not like these. These are these are sweet. Can you see these? The um, <laughs> sorry, I was leaning into your shot, man. The uh, <laughs> that are you know they're still very personal and and not focused on a particular pursuit. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you look at the read, write webs and tech crunches and that kind of thing, they found something to hook on to. There are it some became... podcasts that are there. Uh, you know what? I think that while the read, write webs and the, the tech crunches yeah. are, are actually kind of abnormal. I mean, they're the exception to the rule. I right. think there are podcasts that fulfill the same needs. I agree. And what I'm saying is that we're, go we're going to find more and more of those okay. and more people are going to push the envelope in what you can do with mm -hmm. a podcast and how you can, um, how you can deliver media via podcast. Podcast, but the I I continue to maintain that the reason those kinds of blogs, more you know Huffington Post, whatever, more revenue generating business oriented blogs work, is because there was a large filter called Google that allowed people to start seeing those yeah. things in context, and that does not yet exist for podcasting. Podcasting and video casting is waiting for the the filter. The the person who's going to the the person or or technology that is going to curate that content and help the best content rise to the top because that is not YouTube. Very good. Okay, I'm going to read. 
I don't. I don't get to weigh in here. I'd love to weigh in. You have thirty two. seconds, Doctor Normal. Oh, jeez. Go. I'm not Thank joking. You, we've got John we've got nineteen McLaughlin. minutes left, Wrong. and there is some important stuff going on. So uh, we'll get there. We'll get there, and we'll get there in whatever we're doing after this. So, um, <laughs> you know, don't I, mess with Cammy tonight. I, I read Ben Sunders. Uh, um, uh, uh, piece there and I tended to agree with with most of it and then I asked myself well why in the hell am I doing this I mean there's two things that I think he points out video is really uh, the next because it's the next thing on the internet I mean it's really key <laughs> people are consuming video so people are searching for their own personal content mm -hmm. um, we here, this podcast can be picked up uh, on an iPhone right now. We can uh, stream live. We can be picked up in syndication on Roku, on TiVo, I think, um, and other platforms. No, oh, you um, can watch this on TiVo. I know that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, Betsy said she was doing it. That's awesome. And so, um, but the question is, uh, I do agree that large corporations are going to come into this space mm -hmm. and manage their own message and their own content. We're seeing that already today. Um, and I also think the major players are, are coming because let's face it, they have content that people want essentially, sure. you know, your, your Dr. Horribles or your TV mm -hmm. shows, uh, Hulu is huge. And, um, so I asked myself what's going on there, but, you know, I, I agree with you. I think we've only scraped the surface of the medium. Yeah. I, I think that we're currently just recreating the early days of television on live streaming. Right. Um, I, you know, we're, we're going to, you know, we unintentionally promote ourselves. But if you look at what happened with 30 Hour Day, that was revolutionary. Mm -hmm. Yet it was also evolutionary and something that... Um, we pulled from, I, I think, the early days of television yep. to yep. recreate something. And you have to recreate an older medium in a new technology before you can then forge ahead and really exploit what the capabilities of the new technology. Right, and I would lump PDXFM in there, too. I mean, what they've, I agree. What they've done with, um, you know, a podcast doesn't and reinventing you know, radio and you and you guys do it with strange, strange love live too is a uh, podcast doesn't mean you have to be independent of schedule right. it, it, you can you can have a scheduled event that occurs live and you guys are scheduled ish, ish. The, the, <laughs> that's, can, that's cammy's resolution for the new year is get the show to start on time i was not throwing a softball your way okay I'm we're done with the, we're done with that although i i saw a tweet from van sander who said he wished that he was online right now maybe uh when we conclude the actual portion of the you know we've got 15 minutes left uh you know maybe we can skype van sander in but right now i'm going to read one more uh, a little bit longer mm -hmm. um prediction uh, from John DeRosa and then Dr. Normal can play our two other audio files. Okay. And then if we good. have time, we'll uh, tackle some of the tweets. Do we get to do predictions? Yes. Okay. But only if you guys can be quick about it. All right. I might allow the show to go to 115, Ooh. but that would really be pushing my buttons. All right. We, we can keep it short. All right. Who turned her into the time referee? <laughs> I've decided that in 2010, everyone will listen to me. Huh, that's no, a good resolution. John DeRosa. Are we ready? Yes, go. John's predictions for 2010. A nuclear device will be detonated above ground. I don't like that prediction. I don't like that one either. Two Republican senators will die of natural causes. <laughs> <laughs> Obama will propose curtailing of U.S. military spending. A leading traditional family values conservative right-wing nutbag leader will come out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, the Democrats will only lose one national seat in the 2010 elections. Okay, those were those were the ones I had. That was yeah, interesting. I don't, I don't I'm have not any sure comments. That, yeah, I'm not sure if that hits our sweet spot of tech and startups. It didn't. But we just asked for predictions. So I read no, them. That's true. Yes. No, I, yes. And we yes. appreciate. Them. <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh, now I hope who was, I hope the first one doesn't come true. I I actually very sincerely hope that. Yeah. Now, Dr. Normal, can you please play an audio file? Yes. And tell us whose audio file it is. Uh, this would be... Um, hang on a second. That's a... 
I predict Dr. Normal gets an intern to help him out with it. <laughs> that would be swell. Funny. R-I-C-H-T-E-R, right? Mm-hmm. Betsy All right. Richter. Come on down. Dr. Normal may have be misspelling people's names right now because he's moving pretty fast. Okay, so here's Betsy. Hi, Rick and Cammie. This is Betsy Richter with some predictions for the year 2010. I've got three quick observations and one what I'm billing a wild-ass swing and a miss prediction. Um, of the four things I'm just about to talk about, you guys figure out which one is the, the wild-ass swing and miss. Um, the first is that um, I really do think that the momentum that got generated from both the We Make the Media Conference and Abraham Hyatt's Digital Journalism Conference and the spinoff group will really continue to build through, um, through 2010 in ways that are subtle or in some cases unexpected. Um, I'm betting that you won't recognize most of the players or where the roots came from at first, but you will by the end of two, uh, 2010, and you'll start to see where these people started to really get their stuff together. Um, the second thing is the whole us versus them fighting over scraps, the journalists versus the bloggers, old media versus new media will have to fade away over time. And the people, the doers, will just start making the media, even if they hate the label they've got, don't want to be part of their old crowd, don't want to be part of a new crowd or any crowd at all. And, you know, I'm talking about people like Robert Wagner over at PDXFM, who made several announcements earlier today that really should make people sit up and take notice. And the third thing that I was thinking is that we'll really see at least one local tr traditional media outlet fold up shop, while others will have to seriously adapt or die in the coming year. And I'm also betting we'll have at least two other local Internet media ventures joining PDXFM by year's end. And the fourth prediction, or wild ass hit, hit, swing and a miss predict thing, clear, we hardly knew yet. I'm expecting it's going to be gone by 2010. It is 2010 already. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Comments? Hmm. I, I actually have banned comments because we need to move along. Oh. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, you guys could have like 10 seconds. Seriously. Okay, go, Mike. You can have it. Oh, yeah, go, of course. Quickly. That's to me. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think her, uh, I, I think the bloggers versus journalists is dead. It's dead in 2010. I, it's I done. Agree. We beat that horse. It's over. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Um, you're not going to hear that from anyone. You're not going to hear that from me. You're gonna, not going to hear that from... Okay, if you're we, journalist, we're not going to hear that. That's great. Dead. You um, stop with the long form, cut to the chase. Anyway. Um, and I think that... Uh, <laughs> stop laughing. I agree that uh, we will see new ventures in journalism. Mm -hmm. um, I believe they'll be more multimedia um, oriented. And I, I actually... One prediction I have, I stick by this. I think the new journalist is the journalist who has a day job, who is a content expert in what they do. So in other words, they're the expert. They come in. They actually have another venture. Um, look, Tim Russert was a lawyer, right? Right. And he was a I, – I love Meet the Press with Tim Russert. Hasn't been the same since he died suddenly. Mm -hmm. um, that's the example. You'll have, uh, you know, another type of journalist, TechCrunch, um, and Gadget. Um, yeah, exactly. Another lawyer hmm. and Gadget. These types of things. That's the face of journalism. Read, right, write, thank web. Thank you so much, Doctor Normal. That's it. All right. <laughs> You're harsh. It's we're going on Ooh. ten minutes to an hour, and there's something really important that needs to happen. So could you okay. just do I have the play next Roms, one, please? Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Not only do I get to comment, I need an intern. <laughs> I predict Doc Normal gets an intern. You, you're not asked to predict anything yet. Wait your turn. Actually, I predict Doc Normal doesn't get an intern. Wait your turn. And he screwed. Wait your turn and play right, the ready? audio. Here it goes. <laughs> this is uh, Bram Batoya. Hi, Strange Love Life. This is Bram Batoya, and my prediction for the year... 2010, or 010, as Sweet Deal said, is that more movies will use Papyrus as their title font, and that it will greatly uh, off offend many more eyes of the viewers, and they will gain more and more money. Uh, that's it. Bye.
<laughs> I don't think it'll just be papyrus. Damn I think that there will be a lot of fonts that are going to offend us in the movies. Somebody want to explain that comment? Yeah, so Avatar used papyrus as yeah. their font, and it's not pretty. And it offended people's eyes. It's better their than delicate, delicate some little of the ocular bed. nerves. Ocular? No. Oh. Wait. Yeah. Uh, sure. God forbid if it Look, was. Look, I'm tired, man. Dude, it's late. Comic right. Sans. So, I think Brian so, would be screaming. Ooh, purple on voice Comic mail. Sans would be awesome. I think. I think we're okay. going to get to the Twitter predictions in our after hours okay. segment. That sounds good. Right now, I think that Rick. Yes. Would you like to give us a prediction? Uh, sure. I have two? a. I have a local prediction, and then a, a, a more national prediction, a okay. global p- prediction that I think will speak to some of the other topics we've talked about. Um, my local prediction is that I think we, um, Portland will see the reemergence of the major conference mm-hmm. coming here again, and it won't necessarily be homegrown. So I think uh, it may partially be homegrown, but I think you see OSCON coming back this year in 2010, um, which is great. That will be huge for us. Um, the other thing I think we will see is a major mobile conference mm-hmm. establishing itself here in Portland um, that will focus on all all forms of mobile, not just maybe iPhone-related stuff. And I think that will be a huge conference. I also think that um, from a local scene, I think because of the hard work people have been doing, I think we will start to see some consolidation and acquisitions occurring in the Portland mobile uh, mobile scene, in the Portland, you know, startup, startup scene, tech. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've seen people lay some really good groundwork. So uh, we've seen people get funding. We've seen um, we've seen people start to kind of carve out a niche, mm-hmm. but it's not something that you can really build a gigantic company out of. So I think we're going to start seeing that consolidation on the more global or the beyond kind of thing. Beyond the, um, the, (laughs) just hands blue. The, uh, I think, so we talk about podcasting and video casting and that kind Mm -hmm. of thing. I think we're going to see something coming from Google sooner rather than later on being able to archive that content and search that content more effectively. Because I think if you look at things, if you look at things like Google voice where they're using it to not so well yet, but train, having some quirks, train it to understand the human voice and how the human voice works and try and make that into searchable machine, machine searchable language. Or if you look at things like Google voice search on the iPhone, if you use the Google app on the iPhone, you can do voice search kind of stuff that is training Google to understand voice better. If you look at things like the, you know, the recaptcha kind of stuff and the captcha stuff that they, that are training voice to, to, so I think that's the, that we will see that by the end of 2010, that, that Google will move into a realm where, where it will actually be able to start to index effectively video content and audio content because of what it's been doing in its labs to, to develop the, the lexicon for the for the technology. So those are my those are my big ones. Right, you've done your job for the night. You can take your suit jacket okay, off. Okay, sweet. Comfy Good. up, right. Doctor Normal. Excellent. What are your predictions? Um, I think that um, hardware will be the game changer, and y- you don't have to change now. We could wait no, until we go to he's commercial. Just, he's, he's choking. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's hot. I mean, you guys do the thirty hour day straight. and it's like you're Did you see how much dis- makeup she put on me during yeah, the thirty right. hour day? We gotta, a, lot. Got a lot. Okay, so you do your uh, predictions, please. Hardware will be the game changer in uh, two thousand and ten for media. Uh, a uh, Apple iSlate will propel more drive for video and content. Um, I also predict that I will be able to ride herd on talent in front of the camera <laughs> and make them not take their headphones off or their clothes off while we're. You said I, I, was, you said I was getting naked. No, oh, said that I was, was getting naked. I got so confused with that. Um, so I don't know. I, I think people lost that. Uh, Sorry. 2010 <laughs> may 2010. see traction with uh, the Android phone, with mm-hmm. the Google, well, the. I don't know what do we call Non-iPhone it now. The Nexus, the Android phones. operating system, um, open source continues to grow. Uh, Microsoft continues to struggle, uh, unfortunately. Um, and um, locally, locally is a good one. I, I think we've covered what's happening locally. I think yeah. we will see 
Portland continue to rise as a leader in, for lack of a better term, new media, new journalism. Um, I think that, as Betsy suggested, um, certain there will be certain alliances and certain people coming together to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And um, so we'll keep keep the eye on that. I also see older broadcast media outlets continuing to struggle. Uh, we saw it in uh, newspapers. We'll see it in radio. Um, we might start to get an inkling of that in uh, in the video realm, in television stations, or, or we'll see television stations uh, getting wise and moving online, uh, taking taking essentially a, a, a page of history from what happened in the newspaper and the radio hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. Is it my turn? Oh, one Oops. more thing. <laughs> one more and thing. 2010 what? is when we make first contact. Oh, oh good. Of course. Does okay. Jupiter turn into a sun in 2010? Yeah. With yep. Roy Scheider watching in amazement. It's full of stars. <laughs> it's my turn now. So I have Go a ahead. really important prediction. I predict that Cammy actually has no predictions, but that we have some announcements to make instead. All right. We only have like three minutes left. So I think Dr. Really Normal, not even one prediction? I have no prediction. Uh, uh, I, I predict that some of the predictions that were made on Twitter and, and parts of some of the uh. predictions are actually pretty accurate. <laughs> so hmm. with that. Do tell. With that, Dr. Normal gets to make the first of two very important oh. to us announcements. You're first. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Normal, you get I, to... You're yeah. first. I thought... No, you 30 are. 30-hour day. No, no, you are. No. Da 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 da. What? <laughs> He's, 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 he's trying to spoil one of the he's predictions. He's trying to spoil one of the predictions. I predict that you'll see more well-honed and slick <laughs> broadcasts this like these from it. Strange Love Live. This is why we discussed it beforehand. I said, which one are we going to do first? And then we decided that right. you were going to go first. I'll tell you what. So, Dr. If, Normal. If you want me in the shot, you guys have to speak. So, I can come over there, get oh, in I the shot. You, we thought you were staying there. Okay, Are if you, you, come, you come, come over, over. Okay. and we'll so I'll talk. just swing in the come shot, We're talking. and you guys talk, can I, and then I'll what leave. What am I talking you can't, about? You can't have your laptop. What? That's my safety blanket. You can't have a safety blanket. All right, here comes Doc my, can, my safety. Oh, it, my lap? Sit. What? Ouch! Here, Sorry. Sit in the chair. Oh, okay, sit. Oh, that's mine! I'm out of shot now. So hard. Production Go. stuff. Okay. You can balance like I said, more well-honed podcasts. Where is my knee? I'm drinking Rick. Rick. What? What am I? No, he I'm, has he's my mic making now. the announcement. Oh, okay. He's got my mic now. He can make the announcement. Uh, do we have a name? This is a really so there is a, no, okay. There's no name. So there is uh, SLL Productions, um, which is the current name. That name I predict will change predict at some point. SLL Productions name will change, but more importantly, SLL Productions has always been people. Right. So uh, Rick. Uh, Tarosi, who's going to rename uh, in the spirit of. Um, of the Ramones, <laughs> he's going to rename his name to Rick Chaos, and he's going to join uh, SLL Productions. But, yeah, that's great. Like, As I'm really, a really happy. Principal, I'm getting all emotional. Um, producer, yeah, principal in SLL Productions, and this is in an effort to grow SLL Productions. Yeah, and thank you for making this that happen. offer. Um, you know, I, I couldn't be more excited. And you guys... As I've said to you before, you guys continue to push me in a way that um, you know no one no one really has, and and I'm looking forward to what we can do in 2010. So short that. story is that um, when we were doing Meme PDX, he so just showed up story, one day and said, "I want to get paid." So uh, we said, "Oh well, hey, why don't you join us?" That's, <laughs> yeah, that's the that's short exactly story. You have a revenue stream? Yeah, please join <laughs> us. So oh. no, mm. but uh, seriously, um, this has been kind of interesting often in the making and um uh, it's just been kind of a coming together uh yeah. it is not a surprise to a few people out there i yeah. think and I was uh surprised if it was very surprising <laughs> and we will be expanding what we do here online yeah. um and wearing cool hats like yeah, these. yeah it's gonna be fun. okay out of my chair okay fun i'm out of here that was creepy <laughs> <laughs> the arranging was more difficult than we that was i think yeah you have a bony knee I do, and a bony butt. Did she say you were boning her? <laughs> she said I have a bony knee. Welcome to the team. Knee. Knee. Oh, boy, this is fun around here, people. All right. Uh, oh, what else? 
Okay, so the and we're oh and, we're over. Uh, no, sorry, I can't do that one. I get to say. All right. All right. I'm gonna get really emotional. I'm sorry. Please don't. I'm gonna try not to. So for the last six weeks of the year, we all worked incredibly hard on a project that was thought up in this studio. Rick and I were sitting over there in Studio B, and we came up with a crazy ass idea to live stream for 30 hours and raise money for charity. And Doctor Normal thought we were idiots. Um, but he still thinks we're he idiots. still thinks we're idiots, but it was really, really important to us. And so uh, Mike came on board and said, well, if you guys are going to do it, at least do it right. And he held our hand and made sure that we did it the way that it needed to be done. Yep. And when we were finished with 30 hour day the first time, even though we were completely exhausted and hadn't slept and had been drinking, <laughs> we decided right away that we wanted to do another one and that we didn't want to wait an entire year to do it again. And so the the other announcement is that we are going to be doing the second 30-hour day on July 2nd. It will start at 10, yes. 10 p.m. Yes. on July 2nd and go until midnight on July 3rd. Yep. And uh, the rest of the information you'll have to wait a little bit longer for. But Yeah. Oh, wait, no. It will start at 6, I think. 6? Yeah. Because we only need to shift it two hours. <laughs> You're right. Six. I don't do math. I was I'm thinking in, it ended I mean, at ten. So no, it'll start. I'm sorry. This is. Look, Trust I'm me. really it's still emotional. In the planning phase. Hey, do you want me to cry or give you information? Yeah, look, and this would be this would be a good time for the. You got this here. This is a little gift for it's for Strange Love Live Productions as it currently exists. But uh, as it currently exists. Well, I haven't signed any papers yet. I haven't signed any papers either. <laughs> I'm just saying. I've never, I've never signed any papers for Strange of Life Productions. This is something for the studio or wherever. Dude, you suck. I know. You suck a lot. Okay. And now the crinkling of paper is over. You can do it in my I shot. Know. Do it in my shot. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. So that is um, 30 hour day in Times Square. We, uh, we wound up on the big monitor in Times Square, and that was a really big deal to all of us. And kind of, um, it was kind of one of those times where we, we realized that what we were doing was, was really happening. And, and so, um, there's a color one in there too, just hidden in the back. I know you guys like the black and white better. So, um, so yeah, so 30 hour day is a big deal and we yeah. need to do it again and yeah. we will. So July 2nd, July 2nd. So we're looking forward to that. And, uh, we should say, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, th it, this is hard for all of us. Um, but it was the strength of that community. And if you haven't seen the thank you, uh, the thank you reel and more upcoming thank yous that will be be there this this was we relied on oh, so that much. community yeah. so much yeah, yeah 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 that's how we made it happen yep and we're giving, we're giving you a lot more time this time it's yeah i mean we've got seven months seven so months that's we easy we won't even start for another six or something <laughs> i don't know who knows we'll figure Five. it out for so july 2nd 2010 <laughs> two <laughs> Soon. Can we start Please. later after the show? Can we Let's start see, planning? We'll have a meeting right after we turn okay. the cameras off for, for 30 hour day. Oh, Two. there's more to plan, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you guys. Thank oh, you. Geez. All right. So, oh, wait. Okay. I got to pull up the other stuff. Uh oh. You've got to pull up. Oh, do I need to stall, stall. for a moment? I need Please. to stall. Oh, what are we doing now? I don't know. I'm feeling emotional. I don't want to stall. I want to. I like it. Um, I don't want to talk to you. I don't like it when I'm emotional. Drink your drink or something. Oh, that's a good fine. idea. <laughs> Did you eat your garnish? I have not <laughs> partaken. It's kind of trapped down there partake, in the I know. That that guy. Sorry. That's all right. He's fine. It's trapped in mine, too. Yeah. Yeah. But. I'm not as willing to share the fruit as I am the olives. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Rum-soaked fruit is good. Continue, uh, <laughs> let's continue to dodge immaturely <laughs> the emotions we're feeling right this now. This is how we fun. deal with things here. Okay? We drink. This is how we deal oh, with things. Wait. We pretend that we're not really feeling the no, very nothing, intense emotions that we're there. having about that's the fine. project that we worked on together. Yeah, it's fine. Just a couple of weeks ago. God, it was just a couple of weeks I ago. I know. $7,000. We just where finished. We? We're over $7,000. We're over $7,000 that, that was earned for charities. I want it double that next time. Just ruined my time <laughs> with the tiki drink. But Should you need me to get you a blow dryer? Yeah, good job. Yeah. But the, I think um, Megan Kate might have my blow dryer. Megan Kate, where are I'm you? I'm not sure. 
Yeah. So yeah, I want to double it next time. All right. I do. Actually, really? I don't want it. I want 15 next time. All right. You heard it here first. 15. That's what I want. I want 15. It's not for me. It's well. 15 for charities. We'll try right. and break it up 5K we'll make a piece. I like that. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be really nice for those people. We've already happen. chosen the charities, but we're, we're not, not telling, telling yet. who. Not They're yet. good, though. They are good. They're good charities. They're really good. We like them. Yeah. Okay. They do good yeah. things. Are we going to roll this out? Okay, yeah, are we're going to really, roll this out. If you're you listening to this on the if you're listening to this after the fact, you're screwed. But if you're watching it on the live stream, just give us like 5 minutes to collect ourselves and then we'll continue with this whole insanity for a little bit longer. That's right. Fair? I like it. Is that fair? Sure. Okay. I need more ice in my drink. I'm warming up a little bit. Say good night, everybody. Good night, good night everybody. everybody. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry I got all, you know, misty there at the end. 